Okay guys, let's take a look at our lesson for today. We're going to be looking at uh, basic derivative rules. So, until now, we've been working with the definition of the derivative, but um, starting today, we're going to be looking at rules. We're going to start learning some rules. Some of them you probably learned last year. So, let's take a look. We know that the derivative of a constant is zero. That's an important rule. The constant multiple rule. Um, the derivative of a constant times a function is the constant times the derivative of the function. Let me give you an example because this usually gives students trouble. So if we're going to take the derivative of say 3x squared, the 3 would be our constant, that's this piece right here, and the x squared would be our function. So we would basically our derivative, we would leave the 3 alone, we would take the derivative of the function which would be 2x, and then we would simplify which would be 6x. So the, th the constant is just kind of hanging out, you know, it's, it's a multiplier, it's not really doing anything. So pretty important to recognize that. Then we have the power rule that we learned last year, which is right here, where you take the exponent you bring it down front, then you subtract one from the exponent. And we should recognize, I hope we realize, the only kind of function you can use this on is like a, a monomial, x squared, or you know, 3x to the fourth, something like that. We cannot use this on like e to something or a number to a, a variable. We can't use it on that. So that's a power rule. It's a very good rule. We also have the sum rule where we can actually, kind of like limit laws, where we can take the derivative of two functions that are being added together, we can take the derivative independently, and then we can add that together. And the same works with subtraction. You can do the same kind of thing. And then the other two rules that we're going to look at today are the derivative of the natural, you know, e to the x, the natural exponential function. And we love e to the x in calculus. In pre-cal, you might have been a little afraid of it. You know, you might not have liked it very much. But in calculus, we love it because the derivative of e to the x is, yes, e to the x. You know, the derivative of, um, you know, e to the x is e to the x. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. And we'll look at the integral uh, much later. So that's a very good, good thing. Then we have the derivative of a to the x. This would be, for example, if I wanted to take the derivative of 2 to the x, if I want to do the derivative of 2 to the x, what I would do is I would get 2 to the x, and then I would multiply by ln 2, and that would be my derivative, 2 to the x ln 2. You might wonder, wow, why is that different than the e to the x rule? Well, it's really not. Um, this is just a shortcut rule. If we use this rule on e to the x, d dx, e to the x, we would get e to the x ln e. And what do we know ln e is? Yes, you remember it's 1. So basically this rule, it just shortcuts this main rule. It's really the same rule. So those are our new derivatives for today. All right, so let's take a look at our first example. Um, the way that this is written, we really don't know, I mean, we don't know the quotient rule yet. We're really not sure. What we, what we need to do is to rewrite. We need to rewrite this so that we could use the power rule. That would be to our benefit. So our first step is going to be rewriting. This would be x squared over x minus 2 squared of x over x, if I'm rewriting. And just to simplify that, x squared over x is x and minus 2, and this would be, you think about this as x to the 1 half over x, leaves me x to the negative 1 half. So my derivative, the derivative of x is 1, the derivative of negative 2 x to the negative 1 half, I would bring that negative 1 half down and multiply it by negative 2, so that's a positive 1 x and then negative one-half minus one is negative three-halves. And so that would be our derivative, one plus x to the negative three-halves. Now, if you don't really like negative exponents, you certainly could rewrite it. 
you know, unless it specifies, you really don't need to, but you could. And that would be your final derivative. Okay. Any questions? All right, let's take a look at our second page of notes. All right, so now let's look at some higher order derivatives. Let's think about, let's look at what that means. So the original function is usually designated by f of x or y. And you've heard me say this before, but we typically call that the position function because it gives positions of things. It's the position function. Our first derivative, the notation can be f prime of x or dy over dx. Okay, those are two different types of notations. They were created by the two different originators of calculus. Um, don't ask me which one I like the best. I actually like them both for in different circumstances, but I do, I like them both. And the first derivative, we also can refer to it as velocity. The first derivative is velocity. So for second derivative, our notation would look like this with two little primes or d2y over dx2. That's the second derivative. The second derivative is acceleration and we'll be working with those concepts in a later lesson, but the second derivative is acceleration. The third derivative, we have three little marks, or it looks like this, d3y over dx3. Um, that's the third derivative, and it has the nickname or the name of the jerk. It's basically the rate at which the acceleration is changing. Every time I hear that, the jerk, I, I think of Steve Martin. I know you probably, I'm old, you probably don't know what that is, but the movie, The Jerk by Steve Martin. Um, and then we actually could, I mean, it'd be kind of fun, we could do the 95th derivative, and we would use this kind of notation to do the nth derivative or the 95th derivative. All right, so that gives you um, a little overview of higher order derivatives. So let's work a couple of these problems. Um, they ask us to find u prime. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this using exponential notation. t to the two-thirds. Remember that the, de the denominator is, you know, signifies the type of root plus 2t to the three-halves. All right, so now let's use our power rule. So u prime is going to be two-thirds t to the negative one-third plus, and I bring the three halves down and multiply it by two, and I get three t to the one half. And you can just leave it like that, that's fine. It's a negative exponent. If you don't want a negative exponent, or let's say we want to turn it back into a, you know, radical notation, let's do that just for practice. So this would be two over three times the cubed root of t plus, 3 square root of t. Just a little reminder from algebra, from algebra 2 and pre-cal, how we can switch those notations back and forth from exponential to radical notation. All right, great. So let's look at our second example. For what values of x does the graph have a horizontal tangent? Now this is kind of code words. We're going to have to piece this apart. What does this mean? Horizontal tangent. Where do we get the concept of a horizontal tangent? Well, it's horizontal, so what does that mean? That means its slope is zero. And where do we get slopes of tangent lines? Mm -hmm, we get them from the derivative. So what this is saying in kind of code words is take the derivative and set it equal to zero and solve for x. That's what it tells us to do, but in a code. So let's do that. Let's take the derivative. Okay, let's set it equal to zero. Now we certainly wish that this is factorable. Unfortunately, it's not, so we have to rely on our old friend, the quadratic formula. Yes, our old friend. And so we have negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And after we get finished having lots of fun doing arithmetic, we're going to, and simplifying, we're going to end up with 
x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 3. And those are the locations where we would have a horizontal tangent to this curve. All right, fantastic. All right, this next one. Now these little fours, hopefully from uh, looking at this notation, you know what they're asking. They're asking us to find the fourth derivative. Now this little line right here means evaluated at x equals 1. So we're going to find the derivative and we're going to substitute a 1 in for x. All right, so let's do that. So let's find the first derivative. So y prime, well first of all, um, I want to rewrite this so that I can use the power rule. I like the power rule. So y prime, y to the first, our first derivative is going to be negative 24 x to the negative fifth. Our second derivative we would multiply negative 24 times negative 5 and get 120 x to the negative 6. Our third derivative, 120 times negative 6 would be negative 720 x to the negative 7th. And then our fourth derivative, negative 7 times negative 720 is 5040 x to the negative 8. Whew, fantastic. So we have our fourth derivative. Are we done? No. We need to find the value um, of the derivative when x is 1. So we do y4 of 1. We substitute a 1 in there and we know 1 to negative 8 is just 1. So our answer is actually 5040. And there is the answer. Alright, so we doing okay? Alright, fantastic.